Bienvenue à cette... Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, session with a particularly interesting theme, producing sustainable uh, food. I think that this is something that uh, uh, is as was already part of our daily life before the crisis, and the pandemic really shone a light on it. For the uh, Cercle des Economistes, we have Patricia Barbizet, and our guests for this roundtable are from the right, Thierry Glandiner, General Director of Invivo, which is the largest French agricultural co-op. Caroline Poutier, you are General Director of the CNEL, the National Center, Interprofessional Center for the Dairy Economy. Clarisse Maniamalev, you are di Associate Director with McKinsey, McKinsey, and you look after the retail sector, consumer goods, and also farming and food. Jean-Philippe Puig, you are General Director of Avril, which is the fourth uh, French uh, food group, and you work on, in oils and uh, plant protein sector. And Dominique Escher, uh, you are at the end of the chain in, from all points of view because you're General Director of System U, and you are therefore the direct link to the consumer. And, of course, we have Unilde Anker Stoldelen, uh, who unfortunately could not be with us, but you uh, manage the EAT Foundation, whose objective is to transform our food system and to ensure that our planet and our in its inhabitants uh, live a healthy life. So, Patricia, I suggest that uh, you directly open our roundtable and you can... <laughs> So I've had so many meetings in this meeting that I've actually lost my voice, so it's uh, good to have a microphone. So hello, <clears throat> I'm going to open this round table uh, on our agricultural uh, revolution with a precept which comes from our political and culinary history. After a, a recipe formulated in 1907 by a uh, lawyer who was also a lover of fine uh, foods, this gourmet who uh, lived through the uh, food crisis confirmed that the destiny of nations depends on the way in which they are fed. And this preset, which is full of wisdom, is for us uh, an alarm. In the world, more than three billion people, three billion people are suffering from malnutrition or by excess, lack, or a bad, qu poor quality of food. As you know, malnutrition comes at a heavy cost, a human cost, a social cost, an environmental cost, or once again, an economic cost. Just for the United States, the United Nations consider that a poor quality food induces a health cost of $1,300 million by 2030. So to uh, ensure our uh, future, we must look in our plates. Our plates must become more sustainable and uh, better for our health. The excessive consumption of salt or sugar, uh, an absence of fruit and uh, vegetables uh, means rising uh, prevalence of disease. And the degradation of the soils and the decrease in pollinators is <coughs> bringing a, a world uh, agricultural production uh, to, to a halt. In the 20th century, the objective was to increase production thanks to the triptych of mechanical uh, strength, chemistry, and genetic selection. In the 21st section, uh, century, to produce better, we must count more on robots, on biocontrols, on diversification of genetic resources. Uh, to mirror this uh, changing production, we must change the way in which we um, uh, feed ourselves with more local and plant-based uh, food. Better producing will not be sufficient. We must also produce more. Produce more to feed a planet with more than a billion inhabitants by 2050 and to feed this, these inhabitants by 2050, food production must increase by 60% produce more, produce better. This is the dual uh, challenge that we must rise and meet. And I look to you all to uh, achieve this. 
So this uh, is a. Uh, there are many imperatives in our society. Uh, first and foremost, ecological issues, and speaking of the preservation of natural resources, the limitation, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, or uh, the protection of biodiversity. The challenges are also economic within this very competitive context where borders between different sectors is <coughs> disappearing. For example, agricultural robots will use uh, artificial intelligence to analyze masses of data on the state of crops, the weather or soil uh, situations. The challenges are also related to education and training, education of consumers from their youngest age and for their entire life, throughout their entire life, training of the future stakeholders of the sector. Over the coming decade in France, half of the people at the head of our farms will be retiring. And in the past two years, we've all had experienced the pandemic, which has really showed the importance of our agricultural sovereignty. This means that we must be uh, independent in terms of our food uh, and uh, from the production of inputs, the section of seed, uh, right to the very plate of consumers. A new agricultural revolution, therefore, that has already been announced and begun, but that we must uh, speed up. With this regard, we must uh, we can rely on growing awareness and a change in behavior of certain consumers. Part of the consumers ha have already become consumer stakeholders that have a, a, a civic engagement in their food and that use um, digital tools uh, to uh, decide what they will buy when they shop. We can also count on an agricultural sector of which each of the stakeholders uh, contributes to the chain. So industries and techniques of uh, biocontrol, a seed, distribution, catering, so many sides of our sustainable food. Everybody has their role to play. To reveal these uh, lines of the agricultural revolution, we will be uh, making a short presentation. And we will invite our guests to make a short presentation, and then we'll have uh, questions. So, uh, Anke Stoldenen, we will first turn to you with EAT. You are working on the transformation of our entire food chain. On your site, I noted down the, impress the expression of impatient disruption, which uh, we believe clearly illustrates your work. Patricia, so how can we mobilize the international community to lead this agricultural revolution? You are a pre forerunner in this area, and we all need you. Yes, please. How to mobilize so the international it's community? It's embarrassing today that I'm. Uh, uh, I had two years, uh, two years of French in high school. But anyway, uh, bonjour, everybody. It's an honor to be here with you all today and share some reflections on my absolute favorite topic, food. To start as with, the science is crystal clear. In order for us to stay within safe planetary boundaries and in order to secure the right to good health for all of our citizens, we must fundamentally transform how we go about producing and consuming and even wasting food. Our food systems can no longer be the main driver of climate change, of loss of biodiversity, of the epidemics of obesity, diabetes, and a host of other non-communicable diseases and of deepening the marginalization of farmers and rural areas. Rather, we need food systems that can actually help us tackle these massive global challenges. Food systems that can be a driving force for achieving the sustainable development goals and the Paris climate commitments, the biodiversity targets, and so on. And for that to happen, three things are of particular importance. First, we must shift to regenerative nature-positive production, meaning that food, pr food production must work with nature, not against it like today. Second, we must shift what we eat towards healthy, plant-rich and varied diets. And last but not least, we must slash food loss and food waste out of the system and transitioning to a circular food economy. And all of this is urgent. 
we have roughly nine years to go. Nine years to go to transform our food systems in order to steer clear of tipping points of a no return, such as runaway climate change. This year's UN Food System Summit is a, a historic opportunity to hit the reset button and kickstart the great food transformation. By 2030, so in nine years, we can and we must live in a world in which our food systems are driving progress towards net zero, carbon emission, radically reduced rates of species loss, improved public health, reduced poverty rates, sharply reduced risks of pandemics, and last but not least, vibrant rural and of course urban communities. Is this about us as individuals shopping differently in our supermarkets, reducing our household food waste, growing vegetables in the backyard? Well, all of this is, of course, important, but make no mistake, it is ridiculous to put this burden on consumers only and telling consumers or telling us that fixing our food systems is up to them or up to us. It's all about our choices, etc., etc. Because this allows politicians and policymakers in governments and in parliaments and, of course, the big food companies to keep on with all the policies and all the practices that make it way too difficult or even sometimes impossible for consumers to choose what's healthy for people and what's healthy for the planet and way too difficult for food producers to make a profit by transitioning to regenerative nature positive food production practices. So this is basically, in a nutshell, what the UN Food System Summit is all about. It's about recognizing that our food systems, in fact, must be radically transformed for the sake of our people and our planet. And now, national food system dialogues are, uh, with all stakeholders at the table, are now unfolding in more than 130 countries. And this in itself is a major game changer because these countries can never go back to think and act on food in bits and pieces and talk about piecemeal solutions. These countries will forever see food as a system. A massive effort is also underway to source and develop bold and science-based solution propositions from all and any stakeholders and from people everywhere that can together add up to the systems change that are desperately needed. And one of the key messages coming out from the science is that incremental changes are simply no longer good enough. We need disruption and radical changes. By the time of the Food Systems Summit this September, we want to see, no, we, we must see, we need to see that governments and food industry and other actors are making real hard commitments for change. And it's near impossible for me to exaggerate how important this summit is. Because again, how we go about producing and consuming and obviously stop wasting food in our world over the coming decades will basically determine the future of humanity on this planet. But as importantly, and for all of you, fixing food is also probably the single greatest opportunity to forge collaboration and alliances and partnerships to create the world we want within a decade for a healthier, more sustainable, more prosperous, and more just future for all of humanity and save trillions of dollars, create new jobs, and ensure thriving economies. So what we need and what we must demand is this bold, strong, ambitious commitments and action at many levels and by many actors, national and local governments, meaning cities, international organizations, the UN agencies, of course, businesses along the value chain, the financial sector, the health and the educational systems, and yes, of course, people as consumers and voters and citizens, meaning all of us. So finally, my motto is and has always been 
Nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. And if we all roll up our sleeves and ask, what role can I play, my company, my government, my city? Well, then nothing is impossible. Thank you so much for the time. A pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Then we all try to do something. Merci beaucoup, Gunil Dankerstor d'Alen. Bonne fin de journée à Stockholm. Thank you very much, and a wonderful day in Stockholm. You've just underlined uh, the urgency of this engagement. That must be massive, and that must be a play out throughout the world. Uh, Clarisse Magna Lamé, uh, you can maybe, with your very broad, uh, the broad vision that you have within McKenzie, maybe you can. Uh, uh, focus uh, things somewhat for us. Yes, maybe uh, we can focus on France and Europe because in the framework of the Green Deal, are we well positioned in France to be the leaders of this revolution? So agriculture is the fifth uh, sector in terms of greenhouse gas emissions in Europe and the third in France because we are a, a very uh, uh, strong agricultural uh, power. So. I will begin by explaining what the Green Deal is and what are the very precise and big objectives that have been quantified and shared. The ambition is to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emissions by 50 percent and by 2030. So how can we manage to do this? 50 percent uh, reduction of food wastage, 50 percent reduction in use of pesticides, 50 percent reduction in use of antimicrobials that are uh, used in uh, farming and uh, fish farming. Uh, a minimum of 20 percent uh, uh, of the use of fertilizers and organic farming that sets off from 10 percent of cultivated land today up to 25 percent in 2030. So these are the objectives fixed by the European uh, Pact and uh, this applies to France. So uh, how can we achieve this? We've tried to model uh, a set of levers that allow us to achieve these objectives. And there are two main ones, in fact. 78% of the reduction of greenhouse gas from the farming sector comes from the adoption of farming practices and technology that allow us to, be, to emit less gas. Is this science fiction? Not at all. More than one third of these technologies are mature. When a technology is mature, it means uh, it is uh, uh, something that is ready to go and delivers results. Uh, about half of these technologies are still in the pilot phase, meaning they've already been uh, tested. Uh, and they have to be scaled up in the coming years. And there's a remainder of technologies that are in the exploration phase, but within 10 years' time, they should be <clears throat> ready to go. The second main lever is the changing uh, con consumption, and that's more difficult to, uh, to bring about because it, it, it will affect everybody in terms of what we eat. But there, uh, there is a, a realistic uh, pathway and quantified pathway to achieve these objectives. Amongst the obstacles and the complexities, there is a, a combination of uh, un factors of uncertainty. We have the income of farmers that uh, might go, be, be uh, going up and down. So between, uh, with, the, with a variation between 2 and 16 uh, percent. So that is a lot of variation in terms of the capacity to implement these liver levers. So there's a, lot, a highly volatile market in terms of uh, raw materials. <coughs> there is a reduction, a, a, a downward trend of yields of volumes that will go from uh, 7 to 6 per, 6 per, 16 percent in Europe. Wheat, for example, in 2030, as a European region, we might find ourselves uh, to be net importers. And from a geopolitical point of view, that is a food dependency. So it's very important. So there are uncertainties with regard to the competitive distortions within a framework of an open market. The, there is also an uncertainty as to the will of consumers to pay more. We estimated in our studies that uh, the, the, 
it would be cost more between 120 to 530 euros more per person and per year. So in the household basket, the share of uh, food would in, uh, in terms of cost would increase. That's a very important element, therefore. And then there's a the distribution of value. So as a conclusion, to stick to my five minutes, there is an implication, the implication for France. I would say that France really has some unequaled assets with uh, land, farming conditions, know-how, agronomical research. We even have the French tech that can also work for French agriculture. So we really have competitive assets that we must bring into play. We have a second powerful motor of transformation, which are the French commuters, even compared to European consumers. They are, are, are demand products that are local, organic, or natural products. And we're doing studies, even during the COVID, 22% of French people said, I am ready to change brands if the brand that is offered to me is more natural, more organic, etc. Whereas we have an average of 15% among Euro European uh, consumers. So there is a demand in the French market with these assets. And uh, the ho what we hope, therefore, is that French agriculture become a model uh, of this uh, environmental transition for farming to allow this more sustainable um, uh, food. Thank you, Clarisse, for this uh, very rich intervention. A very strong lever is that of consumers. So here we have a big uh, specialist of consumers, so with uh, System U, who is in direct contact with consumers. Uh, so we need to know how we can activate this lever with uh, the uh, um, the price as a regulator. Absolutely. So I'm going to bear testimony as a distributor. A system U is the fourth uh, French supermarket uh, player. And so, uh, what uh, what about last year with regard to this topic? As I, Alexander said. Uh, uh, in the round table next door, we were uh, together with Jack Crystal, who was in the uh, room last year, during the heart of the crisis, to follow the French food chain to make sure that it can continue to operate during the crisis to feed French people. And during this, pre uh, this uh, period, we realized that that chain could be fragile and that there was a risk that it might break. And that really struck me. That was at the end of March 2020. We were asked to work on a, a possible uh, rupture of the chain. And that was a, a sudden awareness. A few weeks later, I met some uh, European colleagues who told me that in their countries, the chains, uh, the chains were ruptured. And 40 or 50% of their stores were empty because there was no more um, no more goods available. A figure mentioned by Patricia earlier on, I regularly visit uh, farms, and we can add to this that in 10 coming years, 50% of our farmers will retire. And in the last farm that I visited just two weeks ago, uh, we saw that out of the 50% that will be retiring, there are uh, Three thirds. One, the farm will be taken over by someone else. The second is that the, the farm will be uh, closed and the land will be taken. And the third, in the dairy industry, it will actually just disappear. So that is a real topic there. To this, we may add a few figures. France is the first uh, farming producer and has been for a long time now. In particular, there is a, a, an, a, a significant accident in our imports and exports for a long time, except that this accident is uh, dwindling over time. Very clearly, for in recent years, it is dwindling. And we're uh, in importing increasing amounts. And if this continue, continues in 2023, France will be importing more goods than it exports in terms of agricultural raw materials. So that's very striking, and it illustrates the fragility of the chain. And if today we removed wine and spirits from the equation, we would already uh, be uh, in deficit. As, distrib as distributors and supermarkets, what can we do about this? The first thing is I think it's, all, it's great to have debates such as the one today. Uh, the farming world organizes a lot. Uh, two months ago, I participated in a big conference on uh, food sovereignty organized by farmers. 
So uh, w the risk is ahead of us. If we all work together, we can find solutions. That's the first point. Second point is we are also producers. We have a distributor brand, which is called the U brand, and we're trying to make this brand into a, a particularly engaged, responsible brand. We were the first to remove the um, harmful substances to, in order to allow people to eat better. And we have three party contracts with farmers. So all of the yogurts of the U brand are made within the framework of three party contracts that respect the farming world, which provide them with a visibility over five years. We have a minimum price with our farmers for the purchase of milk, etc., etc. This type of relationship, which we sometimes think is not possible, is in fact possible thanks with uh, supermarket chains also. There is another subject, and that is to support the farming world uh, to transition towards new practices so that their production is more respectful. And others spoke uh, in this roundtable about this. We are a member, founding member of an association called For uh, a Living Agriculture, which aims to help the farming world to transform towards better practices. And of course, there is a final subject, that of protein independence. We, d we don't realize about this in terms of the sustainability of our food systems. We import a lot of animal feed which to feed the animals that we then eat. And that is a really hot topic. We have to reduce this. We have to work on that subject. And via the products that we're selling, we're also trying to reduce this importation of animal feed. So there are figures. Uh, 77% of our producers are SMEs, 80% uh, very quickly of, of uh, raw materials that enter into uh, products will be of French origin, and we're fighting for this on a daily basis. But beyond this, and I will end on that note, there are other points. We mustn't lose sight of the fact that the uh, supermarket chains alone don't hold all of the solutions to these topics. There are many farming produce that are sold to uh, the catering industry and the export market, so catering industries can't solve all the problems. And uh, there are big topics. For example, when you go to the restaurant, very often the meat that you eat is imported. Therefore, we have to think about that. There is a law that is uh, under discussion currently to improve the revenue of the the agricultural world, which is called uh, the food law, uh, section two. And the idea is to provide visibility to farmers with regard to better uh, compensation and payment. So the sustainability of the farming world is a key for our sustainable food system. And uh, it, their competitivity is at stake here. And final point. It's the role that you all have as citizens in the, here in the room. It, it's a question that has just been raised. What uh, price are you ready to pay tomorrow for sustainable food? That is the hot topic that will allow us to uh, really uh, obtain a shift in paradigm. We know that we must make sustainable uh, diet as accessible as all affordable for all, but at one point that will not be sufficient. So I ask the question to the room, what price are you ready to pay for sustainable uh, food in the future? And I think that's a key uh, question uh, to uh, meet this challenge. Merci, Dominique. Uh, thank you, Dominique. When we are listening to you, we are worried. Uh, French farms uh, uh, cannot uh, feed all the inhabitants in France. Hence, uh, lots of issues coming to the fore. There's a sense of emergency, a sense of urgency. You've underscored that uh, economic development should go hand in hand with responsible commitment. Uh, Caroline uh, Le Poulquier, I think that the dairy sector has been working on that for quite a long time with lots of uh, commitments, uh, strong commitments, uh, animal welfare and environmental protection. And uh, there's a a uh, uh, specific uh, pillar, um, the uh, collective spirit. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, there are lots of challenges, international challenges, European challenges alike. And we talked about uh, consumer demand. And for a sector, we represent producers, dairy producers, industrialists transforming milk, processing milk, uh, distributors, uh, dairy producers. So we have a challenge to take up. So, so let us uh, embrace the future together based on solidarity. These are values that uh, we want uh, uh, to disseminate in a sector. 
So you have the public authorities, uh, they enact laws and regulations. There are individual challenges for private companies, for cooperatives. They've been embarking a pro upon societal approaches. So the dairy sector has decided to launch an approach based on uh, CSR, France Terre de Lait, in order to highlight the how. How can we provide uh, some answers to the questions raised by consumers and citizens? We need to launch progress-driven approaches, and the dairy producers have been doing that for quite a long time, and it's important to make commitments for tomorrow. So it's not simply a matter of saying I'm doing a good job, but how can I commit uh, to doing things better. It's a matter of pride. Uh, we need to uh, consider the actions that uh, we've embarked upon over the past few years. So we have uh, different economic stakeholders, and they should agree uh, on what is uh, a common sense without any spirit of competition. The objective is to provide some answers when we uh, consider the main requirements of citizens' environment and animal welfare are two uh, glaring examples. And the French dairy sector of the past 10 years has uh, curtailed by 20% uh, its uh, carbon footprint. But if we don't give uh, some explanations, if we don't uh, make uh, commitments for the future, uh, in it means that we won't show consumers and citizens that we provide products that are healthy. And what is important is to show customers that we produce dairy produce in a sustainable fashion. We have to produce goods that are good, healthy, accessible, so that consumers and citizens are responsible for their consumption habits. Allow me to mention two examples. The interprofessional dairy sector has noticed and advocated dairy produce to be made in a sustainable way. And the collective dynamics has sped up so we have uh, different representatives in the room. It's important to make uh, swift uh, actions uh, uh, to be responsive. And with uh, that responsiveness, during the uh, peak dairy production, we had to make sure that we could supply supermarkets. So we uh, implemented uh, some measures to help uh, dairy producers so that uh, they could uh, uh, throw away um, so that they could uh, not uh, throw away milk. So we were reactive, we were responsive, and all the uh, stakeholders in the dairy sector have played a key role based on solidarity. Solidarity uh, enables us uh, to, 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 to show that when there's a crisis, and there will be lots of crises, so uh, when there's a crisis, public authorities in France and in Europe Economic stakeholders need to mobilize themselves. Uh, if we are all mobilized, uh, we will be stronger. It's a spirit of solidarity. The challenges and stakes are huge. France Terre de Lait, the dairy sector got organized in order to show to the consumers, to the citizens, to the public authorities as well, that at the end of the day, being able to make commitments uh, to environmental protection, animal welfare, providing healthy products to consumers, better distribute value. All these uh, aspects are fundamental. With France Terre de Lait, we can uh, show that a sum of individual commitments uh, is uh, above uh, regulations regarding the environment. We developed a tool, low carbon dairy farm. We can activate in each farm the different drivers that are the uh, more relevant in order to mitigate uh, the impact on the environment. When you look at all of the uh, drivers, all the levers, it's possible to 
maximize uh, the uh, efforts and the uh, collective good at a national level, and it's an asset, uh, it's a strength. I won't dwell on that. Remember what Mr. Shelcher said. We are dealing with the huge challenges. Uh, the dairy sector exports quite a lot, but I can tell you that we need to attract a new generation of people. We need to make sure that our businesses are more attractive in the uh, mountains, uh, in areas where we produce a lot of milk. It's important for us to be involved and to, to operate in the long term. Term. We need to be in a position to value the right products, the right models, the right values disseminated by the dairy sector. All the economic uh, stakeholders in the dairy sector uh, should uh, uh, propose products uh, that convey some values for the consumers. So there are lots of things to do. Uh, in the uh, food business, in the dairy uh, business. So I think that we will be able to act if we can create a value, uh, create values uh, for uh, the uh, consumers. And we shouldn't fight uh, all the economic stakeholders uh, who play a key role in our economy should uh, cooperate together so each economic stakeholder stakeholder each uh, economic player uh, should win all together but of course the objective is uh, to have uh, policies that are geared towards citizens and consumers thank you so you are quite sanguine you are quite optimistic and that's great uh, that's really pleasant jean philippe puig at Avril Group, Caroline talked about the need to uh, propose the best product while limiting the environmental footprint. So at April, you have a raison d'être uh, to serve the land. So we are at the heart of this uh, twofold uh, issue. And you will uh, tell us uh, about. Uh, 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 plant-based protein or vegetable proteins, they play a key role, a crucial role. At Avril, you have a strong expertise, a strong know-how. Yes, by way of introduction, all together we have a role to play. There are two challenges to take up for the planet, a global warming and demographics. Uh, regarding demographics, and I will insist on demographics. What is at stake is to feed 9 billion inhabitants very shortly in the near future. So it means that in the food industry at Avril, we are focusing on transitions, food transitions, energy transitions, environmental transitions. So we need to serve the land. The land is our raison d'être, raison d'être, and it's a reason why we need to act. That's why the men and women of the group are working hard. Our mission was created in 1984. Our mission statement was forged in 1984. The Avril Group was founded to develop oils and proteins in order to feed men and women and protect the planet. It was back in 1984. So this is the ambition that we nurture. I would be talking about proteins. Why? Everybody knows that proteins uh, are a pivotal for our uh, uh, eating practices, eating habits. So we are a net importer of 60% of our needs in Europe. And with the uh, increase in demographics and with changing eating habits. Unfortunately, we are heading for a shortage, shortage that will be inexorable. We will be suffering from a lack of proteins. As Dominique said, this is a global challenge. As uh, Patricia said, by way of introduction, I didn't know her. She said that we need to produce more, we need to produce locally, we need to produce better, and I will add we need to be innovative to produce more. So at the end of the day, this is what we did with our sector. For the past uh, 40 years, we de developed the colza, uh, a sunflower. Over the past few years, we've uh, developed soya bean, but it's not enough. 
and we convinced all of the players in the sector and the government to launch a protein-based plan with a budget of 120 million euros so that we can produce more proteins in France. So it means that the farming world will have to be modernized and productions will have to be uh, diversified. We need to focus on pea, uh, lentil, farming. So there are lots of incantations, but uh, we need to focus on sustainable solutions. We need to forge business models that will make sure that value is well distributed among the different players, from the consumers uh, to the uh, farming community. At Avril, we launched a platform, a purchasing platform of seeds. And for the first time ever, we've moved from a system, a punitive sit system, so basically you pollute and you pay uh, to a system that is more virtuous because uh, uh, you are better, so you will get a better income. In this platform, we buy seeds uh, to farmers at a high price, and they can prove that they improve their uh, practices, their farming practices, so the uh, farmer uh, is able to improve uh, his uh, strategy and uh, uh, reduce the uh, carbon footprint. A second important point, or third important point, uh, innovation. Of course, you can produce more and better, but it's not enough. Uh, once again, uh, so the increase in the consumption of vegetable protein is about 10% a year. 10% a year. So we are suffering from a lack of proteins, but we need to produce 10% more annually, but we consume more plant-based proteins, uh, uh, less animal proteins, so we can uh, rebalance uh, our uh, consumption uh, patterns. So at Avril, we are currently uh, building the first factory, the first global factory that will extract the colza protein, oilseed uh, uh, protein for uh, human consumption. It is in line with the uh, policy of France for startups. In startups, you have lots of intelligent people, smart people, who can come up with new ideas in order to uh, stay the course. So by way of conclusion, Avril wants to become the leader of vegetable transformation uh, in order to bolster this transition, food transition, environmental transition. So we have an ambition. Over the past 40 years, we have halved our protein uh, imports in Europe, 90 percent. So we uh, import uh, uh, 60 percent in uh, Europe. So we moved from 90 percent to 45 percent. So. But we want to be faster. In the next 10 years, we need to reduce by half our imports. And we don't have all the solutions, but it's pivotal. It is something that is important to us. And the oil and protein sector is fully mobilized to take up that challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. So you've talked about the need to innovate. It's important to innovate, the need for innovation. Thierry Blandinière at InVivo, so you have put technologies at the heart of this new way of farming, regenerative farming, regenerative farming. That's a nice concept. So how does this technology help us or how Will this technology help us? So I've got the right mic. So what about this technology? How this technology will help us launching, will help us launch this revolution? Uh, I'm delighted to be with you. I'm the last to speak. Everything has been said. But uh, I'll try to do my best. And I hope that I will be able to make relevant observations. But I do agree with what has been said. And uh, 
I do concur with the uh, measures that have been taken by the uh, Avril group. I have in mind a survey that I've seen not a long time ago. And according to the survey, it was important to understand uh, the uh, farming sector, especially uh, for uh, consumers. It's a matter of uh, connecting farming with the citizens, with the consumers. It's a BVA survey that was unveiled in 2020 or 2021. And consumers have started to understand that the farming community is changing and changing fast because uh, what is uh, farming all about? Uh, uh, in uh, 2015, 52% of people were positive and in 2021, 22% more people are positive. But uh, when asked, what about the equation, how the farming community can solve the equation to produce more and better? And is innovation the solution? And the answer today is 22% of favorable opinions. It means that the consumers understand that innovation, research and development, new technologies will help us square the circle to produce more and better. That's an important element because we can move away uh, from a, 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 a communication problem, uh, agricultural bashing. We need to move away from this uh, concept of agricultural bashing and new technologies will show us that we can produce better and more uh, with uh, precision. So in the future, we'll, we will be uh, able to better organize the um, economic production of a of a, 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 a piece of land we will focus on the yield per hectare so we have some pilot farms 1000 pilot farms or so and we are showing that it's uh, possible uh, less input more results less uh, input more output so the idea is to change uh, the scale it's important to scale up how can we promote these uh, new practices that work we have digital solutions biocontrol solutions of course uh, the uh, 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 controls will be better. What is important is to attract young people. So it's important uh, for people to get decent income. So the farmers should be at the forefront of a project. So a connected farmer who is trained is in a position to meet the needs and expectations of a society. When we talk about uh, precision farming, made possible with new technologies, we can have a look at soil quality, land quality. For those who are involved in this sector, what is at stake is soil quality. We need to have biodiversity, so the land and soils should be well kept, and they should be carbon well in order to meet the climatic change challenge. So uh, soil quality is a CSR issue, and farmers have understood that process. So uh, farming rotation, crop rotation is important. We need to change some practices. Of course, uh, we need to uh, manage the risk, because when you change uh, practices, we should be in a position to manage risks and found agricultural farming transition. That is quite possible with these pilot farms. We can show that uh, we can get better solutions, uh, top caliber solutions, and we can uh, bring additional revenues, additional income to the farmers. So in the future, we should need to use, we should need uh, new technologies. And what is important is uh, to make sure that uh, farmers have a decent income. From then on, if we can show, the, uh, of course, I mean, uh, 20 euros a ton for, uh, for carbon, it's not enough, but with uh, 50 tons uh, at a better price, we'll be able to uh, focus on a 
see some carbon that doesn't exist. And I turn to the big French companies uh, doing uh, carbon offsetting internationally. So you have to relocate your uh, carbon credits at a value that is higher, but the CSR value would be recognized uh, by the French farmers. The um, carbon credits could be drivers. It will help farmers to move on. So when we talk about regenerative farming, we need to value at market level the CSR value. And it's a challenge uh, that we have in France, but also in Europe and in the US. So if the uh, farmers uh, expend some efforts in Europe, in the US, or in France, if farmers can demonstrate that the land is good, if the farmers can prove that they've invested in solutions for a, a carbon well, there should be a price premium. There should be a premium price uh, for a CSR at a high level. So we need to be in a position today for Euronext. We should be able to list uh, a CSR uh, products. If you do that, you will scale up. There's a liver effect. Everything starts with crops, cereals, and then you can disseminate the CSR policy across all sectors, especially for fruits and vegetables. It's a matter of competitiveness, and uh, uh, competitiveness uh, starts from uh, seeds, cereals. So if we are uh, many to disseminate this message, I think that we can make things change, but how do we qualify the soil? And it's a challenge. When we talk about soil quality, what are we talking about? There are some startups working on that topic. Uh, for example, that there's a startup that has defined a quality level of soil. So uh, certification is at stake here. And then you have a twofold valuation process, a premium price for cereals and crops, and also uh, the uh, uh, farms that are uh, an asset. If you have a farm with uh, a good soil quality, will have a better value. So it's a virtuous circle that will fast track this ecological and food transition. So, so we are fully mobilized to disseminate this message. I know that uh, this message might uh, be giving you food for thought, but we don't want to focus on incantations. We'll have some farms that will represent one or two percent of the flows. We'll have organic products, local products, but they only account for 25 percent of the uh, potential. I mean, 75 percent of the potential should be tapped, uh, focusing on uh, a big uh, farms, uh, big crops. So otherwise, uh, uh, it will be a matter of announcements, which is not good. We need to have a global approach. The Europeans, the Americans are concerned with this uh, movement that is uh, set in motion on the planet. Merci, Thierry, pour cette... Thank you, uh, Thierry, for this introduction uh, uh, about the future. So uh, a short uh, Q&A session. Uh, Claire dolan Closel, she's an entrepreneur. And uh, you've uh, uh, said that it's necessary to share value and how technology uh, can enable us to increase value. So the question is how and when we will be able to uh, balance the production patterns between producers and consumers. A quick answer? And then uh, I will allow my customers to express my to express themselves. So supermarket chains, uh, they are not alone in the agricultural market. So uh, I'm not McKinsey, but 
maybe they represent half of the market. But what is at stake here is uh, to be part and parcel of the globalization movement. I will give you one example. The price uh, of pork, it was very low at a given point in time. The uh, Stéphane Le Paul, the Minister of Agriculture, we should get a price of 1.4 euro for pork, but it didn't manage uh, to take up the challenge. Uh, two years after, the Chinese faced health problems and they decided to import a lot of pork and uh, prices went up more than 1.4 euros. So globalization can also create value. I mean, uh, globalization shouldn't be demonized. Just uh, to tell you that all markets are intertwined. They are intermingled. Moreover, we should be in a good position to value what is being sold on the French market. That's why there are lots of laws on the, in France. Of course, we have the uh, a law on food. And with the law on food, uh, uh, drivers have been tapped. Dairy producers managed to get uh, higher returns for their production, but not all the markets have benefited from that. But their second law in the pipeline, each uh, distributor has a virtuous approach, contractualization on some markets. So we need to continue to deploy these efforts, but we are in a global market. We need to take into account uh, uh, exports and uh, catering practices. We, uh, Two quick questions. Thank you for your uh, comments. Allow me to uh, talk about uh, the uh, premium prices uh, for a CSR. Will consumers be ready to pay more? Um, as far as I'm concerned, yes. But maybe we should raise the question in a different way. Maybe you should lobby uh, with administration in order to tax all of the uh, products with external, uh, negative external, uh, uh, negative uh, consequences. So I think a new uh, taxation system should be implemented. Clarice? A short and simple answer. I don't think that I will talk a lot about taxation. I think that uh, information will be increasingly transparent. I mean, there are lots of applications regarding the nutritional uh, quality of the products that are being sold in supermarkets, lots of apps about uh, the processing rate of the uh, products. Has the uh, product been processed a lot or not? Uh, transparency about the uh, carbon impact. Carbon impact in, in terms of production modes, in terms of transport modes. So I think that uh, awareness raising is essential. Uh, food is not only an economic uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, we need to focus on uh, women's education. I'm not saying that uh, women uh, should cook all the time, but uh, it's important to talk about nutritional choices. So uh, we need to focus on, on the carbon footprint, have in mind the millennials and the Z uh, generations of people these uh, topics, I mean, uh, do matter to us. They want to get the right level of information. And uh, in France, we want to use uh, taxes, I mean, to sort out a, to sort out a problem. Of course, uh, awareness raising is important. I look at uh, the behaviors of uh, customers. There are lots of uh, people who are in dire straits. We know that. And uh, these uh, 
uh, people, they buy lots of processed products that are quite expensive. How many children cannot recognize a, a vegetable a turnip? Children, they don't even know what a turnip is. So let us be educational. Let us focus on awareness raising uh, uh, campaigns. It's better to use a veal scallop instead of buying a processed product. But we are moving uh, ahead, and I think that the crisis has helped us uh, has helped us uh, quite a lot. So I will allow you to conclude. But there are three ideas. First idea, there are uh, uh, huge challenges, and uh, uh, there are European, French, global challenges, but we need to work together in order to embark upon this transition. There are two ideas that were salient. France has lots of assets. Uh, we already uh, started uh, taking action, so in all fields, seeds, digital traceability of foods, we need to innovate and invest and massively everywhere in order to keep uh, uh, our dynamics, to keep our momentum. We need to preserve our independence and we need to have a more sustainable agriculture, but we need to work together. We need to cooperate. It's important to have collaboration-based approaches, so everybody has a role to play. But we need to cooperate with others, with consumers, with producers, with the public authorities, with the distributors, with supermarket managers, and with civil society. So everything should be based on cooperation, collaboration. It will be a global commitment if we want this major challenge uh, to succeed. I uh, started with Bria Savarin, and I will finish with Bria Savarin. Two centuries ago, he said that the table was the only place where we were not uh, get bored during the first hour. And I think it was the case of our round table. We were not bored.